Um, hello, good afternoon. So, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. Um, I just had a, a welcome to Hong Kong anyway, actually. <laughs> um, I'm <laughs> not sure if I can say that because I'm not based in him to Hong Kong, actually, neither. So, 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 I just heard that um, you flew all the way from the Seattle, right? Is it? Yes, yeah, Privateer Holdings is based in Seattle, Washington. Wow, and still jet, jet rug maybe, right? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so anyway, uh, please um, enjoy our discussion. Um, the, uh, uh, we're going to talk about the cannabis, which is very, very um, unfamiliar, namely okay. kind of thing. So um, can I the, um, start the our discussion with uh, starting with uh, uh, what you're doing or what, you, what is your business actually? So, so can, you ask me, uh, can you tell me something a little bit about that? Certainly. So uh, six years ago, I was working for a venture capital bank in San Francisco, California. Uh, and I was a COO of a, a subsidiary of a, of a bank there that was focused on venture capital valuations. We, we valued startup companies and venture capital portfolios. Uh, we had 3,000 venture capital backed clients and I saw lots of CEOs and lots of companies from uh, lots of different industries. Uh, and one day, uh, six years ago in May 2010, a, a cannabis company came into my office. Uh, mm -hmm. The bank wouldn't take them as a client. But it, it got me thinking about um, emerging industries. And as, as I started looking at the industry, I put together a team, I have two partners, and we went around the world. We went to places like Northern California and Colorado, Oregon, Washington, Canada, Jamaica, Israel, Spain, the Netherlands, any, any place that had legal cannabis. And we realized that cannabis is a mainstream product consumed by mainstream people around the world and that the end of cannabis prohibition was inevitable, uh, that it would happen sooner than everyone thought, and that, that brands, uh, brands would shape the future of this industry. And so that's, that's sort of the genesis of the company. So how long have you been working on uh, your business now? So we, we've been operating for six years. Originally, we thought we would be building a venture capital firm to invest in cannabis and realized pretty quickly uh, that most of the companies in this particular industry were too, uh, too early. Um, uh, the industry was too immature. The companies were unsophisticated. Uh, the, the managers many times were unprofessional. Uh, there was a lack of capital, the brands were bad. Um, and so we, we put together a holding company, we went out, we raised seven million dollars from investors. We bought a company called Leafly um, that didn't have any traffic, it didn't have any revenue, didn't have any clients. Uh, today it has 65, 65 people, it's profitable. Uh, 10 million people used it last month, um, and we're growing at about a million new unique visitors a month. We'll get to about 17 million. Uh, in December, so Leafly was the first company we bought. Mm. So um, we actually have a bunch of the business founders in our audience today. So, um, if my, from my perspective, the, the typical the entrepreneurs uh, tend to they start with a much simpler business, like the creating the, the mobile app, something like that. Uh, actually, the mobile app is also pretty tough, but actually. Uh, people want to uh, start with a kind of the developing a digital uh, thing or kind of things Be because it's probably easier than the creating kind of the how they say you know the what you're doing is very in your industry there are many um, obstacle a uh, kind of regulation or those kind of things so 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 how how is the kind of the difference uh, I'm not sure but actually how you are how is that diff how is it difficult how you are uh, experiencing a tough uh, in terms of the tough time, in terms of the launching business in the industry right now? Sure. Um, you know, w when we looked at this industry, I wanted my next project, my next entrepreneurial project, to be something massive. Uh, and the cannabis industry is massive. In the US, it's a $50 billion industry. Around the world, it's a $200 billion industry. Uh, a $200 billion industry around the world that doesn't have any public companies, uh, doesn't have any venture capital investments. And so we, we wanted something massive, uh, a massive opportunity. Um, most of the companies that were my clients six years ago were all technology companies or life science companies. I wanted a company that actually produced a, a physical, tangible product. Um, most, most technology companies have an engineering risk and a market acceptance risk. Uh, we knew that people, uh, people can grow this product and, and there's already a market for it. People will buy it. Um, the, the risk was all regulatory, and we saw, we saw the end of prohibition as being inevitable. And uh, that's, that, 
that prediction has been proven out. Uh, Canada was the first uh, G7 country to legalize medical cannabis. With the election of Justin Trudeau in November, they'll be the first company to legalize recreational cannabis. Uh, we have 14 countries in the EU that have legalized medical cannabis over the last few years. Uh, 24 states in the U.S. that have legal medical cannabis and four states uh, that have legal recreational cannabis. And we'll have 10 ballot measures on the ballot this November, uh, and roughly eight of them will be approved. Uh, we're also seeing rapid legalization across South America, and uh, Australia legalized um, medical cannabis about three months ago. Mm. So, yeah, as you mentioned earlier, actually, in many countries in the world, um, the, the cannabis is kind of... Cannabis is probably illegal. I mean, taking cannabis is illegal probably in many countries, right? So, um, in terms of that, um, how many countries, in how many countries you have presence in terms of you're exporting, you, you mentioned you're exporting your product to the uh, outside, um, outside uh, the US as well, right? Sure. So, so how many countries do you have um, are, um, in total in the world? Okay, so, so uh, we have Privateer Holdings is a holding company with three subsidiaries. Leafly is around media and data. The reason we bought it was because there's no data on this industry. And so with 10 million people visiting, we have lots of information on what products they're looking for, uh, where they are when they're looking for it, and what places where they're purchasing cannabis and cannabis-related products. Tilray is uh, a company that we started. We funded it heavily. And we have a, a medical, a federal medical license in Canada to produce, process, package, and distribute medical cannabis. And so we ship. Um, it's all online. Uh, patients have a prescription from their doctor. Uh, they order it online. We ship it uh, within, tw they get it within 24 hours. We have 8,000 patients who order cannabis regularly from us. Um, we also export from Canada to other countries around the world, um, places like uh, Australia, uh, Croatia, the Czech Republic, Germany is the largest. Germany will be the next G7 nation to legalize a medical cannabis program. They'll do it in the next 12 months. So 80 million uh, relatively wealthy Germans will have access to medical cannabis. Uh, and interestingly, Germany will mandate insurance company coverage. Uh, so that's probably the, the largest market opportunity mm. we see. Mm -hmm. So what about agent expansion? Because we are now in the heart of Asia here in Hong Kong, sure. right? So what about, uh, do you have any... Um, um, sales office or something like that over here? So uh, we don't. Um, we have a lot of investors from, from Asia. So our first round, we raised $7 million. The second round, we raised $75 million. Um, really, we raised uh, the first institutional investment into this industry um, from a firm called Founders Fund, um, where Peter Thiel uh, founded it. Um, so there's the first institutional VC investment into this industry. Um, and it was a huge milestone for us as a company, but the industry as a whole. Um, you know, when it comes to the end of prohibition, uh, we looked a lot at how alcohol prohibition ended. Um, and uh, it looks like uh, when we look at opportunities around the world, uh, certainly the Middle East is the least likely, uh, those countries are the least likely to legalize uh, cannabis, despite the fact that um, even, even countries like Morocco uh, produce a lot of cannabis, but it's still extremely illegal. Um, after the Middle East, uh, most of the Asian companies would be uh, sort of the, the second most uh, or second least likely uh, countries to legalize. Mm. So in order to um, 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 eliminate the ban or kind of things in, in many countries, you need to, you probably need to, the, um, how do you say, um, the making, a, uh, making a, a great effort for educating the people and also educating the kind of role makers to uh, um, how they say, the change the role kind of things, that's right. So do you have any specific, uh, uh, do you have, do you have, uh, do you, are you making a kind of, any specific effort in terms of that? I mean, the educating the people, educating the role maker kind of things. Definitely. So, so in places like the United States, 85% of Americans believe that medical cannabis should be legal if prescribed by a doctor, 85%. You can't get eight out of 10 Americans to agree on anything, but they agree on that. Um, roughly 60% uh, of Americans believe that recreational cannabis should be legal. Uh, and so really lawmakers and regulators are sort of the last bastion of, of prohibition in, in the United States. Uh, we have lobbying efforts in uh, lots of countries around the world, Australia. Uh, we have people in Australia, um, employees there. We have a lobbying effort in the UK, although the UK is a bit behind the rest of the, 
the EU when it comes to cannabis legalization. Uh, we have employees in Spain and Germany in the Czech Republic, uh, where we do a lot of outreach to, um, to regulators and, and government officials. Uh, we also do clinical trials around the world. So the, the medical company Tilray uh, is conducting seven clinical trials around the world uh, for things like chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting, um, childhood epilepsy, adult epilepsy, um, brain tumors, glioblastomas uh, with researchers in Spain, um, and then Huntington's disease uh, in the US, um, one other, PTSD with the University of British Columbia in, in Vancouver. And so, so there it's about educating uh, lawmakers that, that there are other forms of cannabis besides just whole flour and you can produce, you can formulate things like pills that are, are much more um, similar in form factor to pharmaceutical drugs, mm. which um, most regulators and lawmakers are, are much more willing to legalize those types of products. Mm. Okay. So, um, in my understanding, the, the most uh, um, well, the, the best known, the, the, the usage for it, um, I mean, the, the mohine or those kind of things are probably, it's, it's very good for um, the eliminating the, the, cancer, the, the, the patients. I mean, the eliminating the sorry, that cancer pain from the patient kind of thing, right? So, um, but in addition to the kind of the uh, medical use, I mean, so do you have any other uh, usage? Um, um, what, what kind of the, uh, the usage that, that, that your, users, your, buy, uh, your users are um, kind of, what, what is the main purpose that, uh, what, is the, what, what kind of the uh, purpose they have um, in, when they buy, have buy your product from uh, your sure. website? Sure, so, um, you know, most cannabis consumed around the world is consumed for recreational purposes. In, in places like California and Colorado that have legalized cannabis, whether medically or recreationally, what you see is uh, alcohol consumption and revenue uh, from alcohol taxes decreases. So, so cannabis is a substitute for, for alcohol. Um, and so, you know, most recreational consumers, when uh, a state or country legalizes, they, you know, instead of opening a bottle of Chardonnay on a Friday night, they, they consume cannabis. And those are the, those are the revenue dollars that we're going after, um, as well as, uh, this is a $200 billion industry around the world that doesn't have brands. And so the, the third company that we, that we started, uh, we did it in partnership with the family of Bob Marley. It's called Marley Natural Cannabis, and it, it's for sale in, uh, in, four, in four states. So even the consumers, uh, the, the average the consumers can buy product um, um, at the pharmacy is a kind of thing in Canada, right? So uh, in Canada, they buy it online. Um, in most of the EU uh, countries, they'll buy medical cannabis at, at pharmacies. In the recreational uh, states and countries, they buy it typically at uh, licensed uh, cannabis uh, retail stores. So the buyer need to present kind of a prescription kind of things to buy the in, product. In the medical cannabis uh, states and countries, mm -hmm. they, uh, all patients have a prescription mm -hmm. from a doctor. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you have any um, um, specific the, uh, plan in the future from now on? Um, do you have any specific, uh, in terms of the expansion, global expansion kind of things? I mean, uh, if you want, uh, how do I say, and, uh, something like interest, you, you have any interest in expanding to Asia, or um, you, haven't, you have a presence in Europe already. Yeah, uh, you have any specific area in terms of the global expansion? So our, our focus right now is on uh, building up production facilities in other places besides Canada. So currently we export from Canada. We'll build a production facility uh, in, uh, in Australia and we'll build another one in, in the EU over the next 12 months. Um, this, this year we'll raise, so we've raised 82 million um, from investors around the world already. Um, this year we'll raise an additional 100 million from primarily from institutional firms looking at this industry. Um, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting industry in that it's a global opportunity. Um, it's, it's inevitable. Uh, it's relatively immune to macroeconomic turmoil. Um, it's a growth industry. Um, and uh, it may be, it may in fact be counter-cyclical. Um, we're also seeing alcohol companies make investments as a hedge to offset um, alcohol mm. losses. Right. So for you, uh, for your company, I mean, um, what kind of the, the uh, exit case you are expecting right now? So what is the, uh, what do you expect? 
through the IPO or M&A or those kind of things actually? What, what, do you, what kind of the uh, uh, exit do you want? So it, it's an interesting exit in that um, in order to maximize shareholder return, we, won't, we, won't, we likely won't see an exit until prohibition ends. And so we're seeing prohibition end in, in uh, Canada. It's likely that it'll end in, in the US um, over the next three years. Uh, it's ending in Australia. Um, I think, I think we will see prohibition end in a few uh, EU countries. Um, once it ends in the U.S., we'll have exit opportunities. It's it's likely that we would uh, either take the entire entity public or individual portfolio companies based on uh, revenue and investor appetite. Mm. So, do you have any? Do you have also the kind of any uh, intention or any plan to um, collaborate with the kind of startups or um, venture those kind of companies, small companies? I mean. So we do we do a lot of partnering with uh, startup companies in um, in countries that that are emerging. So we have um, we have partnerships with uh, startup companies in Canada and in in the U.S. Um, in Israel and Spain um, in in the the Netherlands. It's an interesting industry in that traditional traditional advertising um, uh, drivers aren't available. So you can't. You can't advertise on Facebook. You can't. You can't run a Google ad for cannabis. Um, you can't run uh, ads on uh, things like Twitter or um, Instagram. And so uh, you have to come up with strategies around those traditional drivers of, of traffic uh, online to to places like Leafly. Uh, and so we, we've had to partner with uh, other other online companies to to drive traffic to mm. our locations. Uh, can you raise some any, uh, some example, uh, kind of some medical uh, industry or medical startups or something like that? Um, so in so so one partner. I mean the partnership. What what kind of the uh, company are you partnering with right yeah, now? Yeah. So uh, there's two companies, one in Canada and one in California, actually that have um, what, really, what really kind of similar industry? technologies uh -huh. in that they enable a. A uh, doctor to uh, talk to a patient um, mm. remote, remotely, mm. and so it's a uh, you schedule an appointment, you um, start up a, a screen, a chat, uh, and the doctor is able to uh, interact with the patient. Um, and in Canada, uh, and in, in in certain provinces in Canada and in California, uh, the doctor is able to write a prescription uh, without actually physically seeing um, seeing a patient. And so we've partnered with with two companies there. One one's called Hello MD uh, in California to to create new patients for our products. All right. So we are mo almost one on out of time actually. But if you have any last word to audience today. Oh, um, I guess I would say that um, th this is, it's a mainstream product consumed by mainstream people. Um, and and the, interesting, the interesting thing about it is that um, there's no real companies in the industry. And so it, what we'll see over the next five to 10 years are you know, $10 billion companies created in this industry, companies really that don't exist today, um, but it's something to, to watch out for. Thank you very much. Thank you for great insights. Thank you. Please give him the round of applause, actually. Brendan Kennedy, thank you very much.